సార్ అవుట్ ఆఫ్ కవరేజ్ ఏరియా ఏరియా సార్ ఇంట్రోడ్ Yes, sir. So, yesterday we seen the DOM parser to extract the XML data. So, today we will work with the XML pool parser. Same applied here. So we will use this for uh, uh, extracting our uh, IDs or uh, extracting our attributes only, but in a different manner. So, the, let me show you. First, again, I will make one function here. we will use this function to retrieve the data and create the method here first i have to open this templates.xml file we have seen already how to open that we have to start the input stream get assets dot open and here file name sir what is this pull parser sir actually what is the functionality of this pull parser same what we did in the dom parser to extract the data but it works in a different manner yeah okay sir while in dom parser we directly go with checking on tags right but it gives us a little bit more uh, data like when the tag is opening and when the tag is uh, closing it also gives that type of data that dom parser do or don't apply to it okay sir yes so first we will surround it with the try and catch and then we will start our xml pull parser first you have to call the xml pull parser factory and factory is equal to again the xml pull parser factory dot new instance then it is also have one catch so we have to catch that error also here then we have to provide the xml pull parser we we'll call it as parser is equal to xml pull parser factory so we have to call the factory then factory dot new pull parser this will give you the parser with from which we will collect the tag names and all the things so we will also put the parser dot uh, no sorry sir parser dot set name space that yeah factory we need for that factory dot set name space aware and here we have to pass the two and then we need to pass what type of the feature we need to our parser we have to call the parser dot set feature and here example pull parser dot feature process name spaces so it will provide you the correct data and here the form then once that is done you can use our parser to get the input dot set input and your here, here our input stream from which we are reading the file and the next null when that is done we will call an in event and that event will provide us the tag and all the other thing parser to get event type so this will provide you when the tag is opening and when the tag is closing or it is an end of the document or it is an start of the document so once that is done i will run one while loop here and for we in while loop we will check that event is not equal to xml pull parser dot end document so why what are we doing in this function is we are checking if the we want to run this loop until the document is ended so what we are setting the condition is event is not equal to xml pull parser dot end document so it, this uh, loop will be running until the until we get the end of the document so what, also what we want to keep the loop running is 
we have to again change our event state event state is equal to parser dot and next so what it will do is now it will run the loop again and again until the tag is end tag then in this now we have to check what type of condition we want so first uh, i will create one switch method here and in this switch event i'll pass the event and open my switch and then i'll put the case here the, the first case will be example full parser dot start tag yes. whenever there is a starting tag it should provide us so we'll also first put the break here and in that we will write our code so what are we dealing with here we are dealing with, with only one type of the tag which was our label tag right so we don't have any other tag to refer so we will use that only so we will put e for so, so first we have to also extract the tag name here in the top you can mention one string here as tag and i will provide it null until we start our loop and here i will get the tag name dot parser we have to call first is equal to parser dot get, get name so it will provide you the tag name so now in this if we can check the tag dot equals to label now what all we want to do is if the tag is equal to label is we want to extract all the data inside here but one thing is you have to take care of this method works a little different so what is happening here when we start the tag what why how it will work like it is only here now the pull parser is here it don't know what is here inside of it or afterwards of this opening tag it only knows the tag is opened and it will where uh, it will it can extract the attributes here but for extracting the text here we need one another uh, pull parser method i will show you that first now when the opening tag is mentioned then we can only extract the attributes from here but we don't can we can't extract the text from here so what we will do is we will only extract the attributes from here so i'll create some more strings for our color then for our font size and then now it's time now when we come at the opening tag we will only extract the attributes here so we can call that parser dot get attribute value and in this value first namespace is null and then the key value which was our color and then we will extract the font size dot get attribute value null and here the font then next the last thing was style password dot get attribute value namespace null and the key value so this will provide you the attributes but it don't know what the text is, text is inside this label if you want the text here this text you have to refer some other method Now for that we have to again switch the case another one case. This was our first case was of the starting tag. Now we will check our next second state, which was the case XML pull parser dot text. Now this method will only provide the text inside the tag. We can again create one. Another string here, null string as text, okay. and we can get the text from here. Go to parser. Got get text. This will provide you the text now here. Now once that is done, we can start checking if the when the tags are ending here. So for that, what we have to do is inside up after this break when the second case is done. We have to start the third case. Then full parser dot and end tag. So for this, we can refer this ending tag. Okay. 
So I'll put the breakfast here. And here we can start writing the code. Now you can see the starting case we are getting the tags from here, but the ending case also need one type of switch statement to check which tag it is taking. So we have to again start one another switch statement and we have to pass the tag. And our first condition if the tag is equal to label. And add the break statement. Okay. Now, when the tag is equal to lab, uh, label, when the end tag is equal to label, we want to generate this whole text view. Okay, why we are not generating the whole text view when we are uh, getting the starting tag is when we get the starting tag, we only get the attributes. We don't get the text inside of it. We can get the text inside of it when we get the end tag. So what we are doing is we are first processing the data. We are going in the start tag, extracting the attributes. Then we are going in the text, extracting the text. And then we, when we come at the end point of the, the tag, we are generating one view here. So we can generate the view here. Next view. And the context here. And inside here, now we can start putting our text view. Dot set text. The text will be which we got here in the text feature. We have to pass that here. And then, then we can take the other attributes also dot set color, text color, dot pass color, and you can pass the color here. And then the last thing, the font size, set text size, and you have to convert it into an integer because you are passing it in a string format and get the font size. And then we have to also check if that style is equal to bold. So we will check that style dot equals to bold. Then if it is bold, we will set that to our text view. That typeface and bold. And once that is done, we have to add this whole text view to an our main layout. So we we'll say. Uh, we have to change the main layout also from here. We change it to a linear layout with the orientation of vertical and with an ID. And I will also remove this text here. Go back here inside our on create method and we will initialize our linear layout. Find you by ID R dot dot of main layout. Now we can use that layout to add the view here. You can call our linear layout dot add view and our text view. And when we run our app again now, okay, you can see that we are getting the text. This time I'm providing the color as black here. And only one text is bold size and which have the different font size and others are all the 18. We are getting the same kind of layout here. The first tag is only the bold and the font size is a little bigger. And the others are with the 18 font size and with the normal styling. We will also create the layout parameters to center it. Linear layout dot layout parameters. New linear layout parameters. And here you have to pass the dot layout on that wrap content and our height wrap. Yes, and we can set that parameters to our text view set layout the params and now we have to give that params gravity to the center and if we run it again we got there. Yeah, not that. You can see now it is working fine. And we already know how to retrieve the IDs of the JSON data. So you can do that also. We are not only referring to the XML full parser, how it works. You can see now we are getting all the data from our template and we are also creating the view. Yes, are there any doubt? 
No, sir, clear, sir. Should I explain it one thing? No, sir. Okay. Have you completed the yesterday's task? Yes, sir. Any doubts? Any doubts in this one? No, sir. No doubts. You also just remember that DOM parser works in a different manner and it works in a different manner. DOM parser, how it works is we can directly refer to the tag and we get all the inside data of that tag. Okay, we just need to reference the opening tag in the DOM parser. If we are referring to the opening tag, we get all the attributes, we get all the text and we don't need to uh, look for our ending tag. But the example full parser, how it works is it should give us a starting tag and for retrieving any text data from that tag we have to refer to the text here then only we can get the text for attributes we can uh, directly refer to the starting tag but for the text we have to refer to the xml full parser dot text so that it can give us some text and when we are referring to the end tag at that time we can create one view here so that it will be all okay with the data because if we create the view at the starting tag only we, we won't be able to get the text here you only get the text when it it is run. When it is running, it is running after the start tag and after when you get the text is when we come to the end tag, we can get the text here. So when we are getting the text at that time only we want to create the view. So I'm creating the view at the end tag. Now at, at this moment, we only have one type of tag here as the label. So I'm creating only one case here. If you are having multiple tags with the multiple nested tag, you can just create here another sphere cases like case of row or case of column and the other things and you can refer to that i'm only having one tag so i'm creating only starting tag as one and one end tag here yes clear yes sir clear sir okay now as you know also the your uh, internship is coming to an end you only have a week i guess right yes sir so yeah. And we have already come uh, looked over all the topics related to the Android development. Yes. Are there any doubts regarding any topics? Probably no, sir. Yes, we have all covered the all the whole basics topics. So you have the knowledge so that you can create one whole app, right? Uh, yes, sir. But collaboration is the problem, sir. When I am collaborating to layouts or to activities, so that time some errors are rising. So I am difficult to uh, overcome those type of errors. Sir. That is which the type of error? Which type of error? Like any kind of errors. Uh, uh, sometimes it show me like uh, HTTP proxy settings, and yeah, sometimes it is show me like main activity. Yeah, I said you the best thing to do with the errors is copy that error and paste it into the stack overflow website. It will give you the correct answer. Yes. Because there are lots of errors, you can't remember all the errors at your mind only. You have to refer to the Google sometimes to go and refer it. You have to just need to paste the data. Just paste the work. First, you can, if you get any kind of error, let's say, uh, I can miss some here. Uh, semicolon and as a run in run only uh, let's check some other like i will delete the id only if i get some error in run statement it is not crashing that should crash it Oh, can we crash our app now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, now we can touch. Now you can see if I crashed my app over here, you can you see this kind of data error right in inside your. Yes, sir. Yeah, when you are getting this kind of error, 
just go to refer this blue lines where you are getting error it will show you the lines where you are getting the errors the best thing is the when you don't know what that line is referring to you come back to your uh, this first line. after this line you can get this there is a runtime exception error at this in front of this it will state yes. in a single statement you have to just copy this statement here and paste it in the google it will provide you with the answer it will be not the whole accurate what you are looking for it will but it will give the related data from which you can resolve your error yes sir you just need to look at this one line first li first two lines of first three line after that it will just say at app dot at uh, app dot and it will give multiple links of the files you don't need to refer to that to need to need to know the, what the actual data is you have to just go at the first few lines here it will be okay, stated sir. there any other error? no sir uh, so, so as I said, there is only one week uh, of your for internship completion. So your last task will be a mini project. Whatever you want to build, you can build and submit it in the last seven days. Okay. Okay, sir. Whatever any kind of app I need, and that app should at least have some database. Or if you don't want to use the database, it should have some JSON and XML parsing over it. You have two options. If you want to use some database operations, you can use that. If you don't want to use the database operation, you have to go for the XML or JSON parsing. And if uh, what I showed you, that kind of data is not uh, not needed. You should use some kind of nested uh, JSON parsing or nested XML parsing, not a simple layout. Yes. That will be your final task. And you got the seven days, though that is enough time to create one simple app. Whatever your idea is, you can create it with using the database or using the JSON or XML passing with nested ones, not a simple layout. Yes, any doubts in that? No, sir. I'll discuss with Pravina, ma'am, sir. Uh, then we are coming to one conclusion. For which type of app will be we are going to develop yeah you don't need yeah you can just uh, you if you want to collaborate with each other if you want to do it in a team then you should go for a little complex uh, complex app which can have some really good functionality yes? yeah so okay sir uh, from up to we learn something yes. For our standards, we will discuss uh, on some app, which is good for, uh, yeah. uh, I mean. We already discussed the fully code operations of the Firebase database. We already discussed the XML and full parsing. So uh, you just need to know how that works really. So that's why I'm giving the task. I know your own. Yes, so when I, until you don't try it on your own, it will be not very good for you. So just try it on your own. You got seven days. Uh, last date of the submission will be the 10th. Like on the 11th, your uh, internship will be completed. So I want your all the data at the 10th. So just okay, complete sir. it till then. If you want to do it in a team, just do go for it. But uh, make a little good app if you want. And also keep a, a good UI also. Just don't keep any not normal or simple layout just go for also good ui because ui is the most the most wanted thing for the user okay sir. Yes. so we'll end this meet here thank you thank you sir